Today, we're taking a look at one of the many, many, many insane aircraft designs that never quite made it beyond the drawing board, the Boeing 759. This will be the first of a new series of videos that focuses solely on the paper designs, and they will serve as the main sort of short-form video format whilst I carry on with the aircraft overviews and deep dive videos, some of which have been trending towards some very long run times indeed. So, what was the Boeing 759? Well, it was meant to be many things. A cargo transport, potentially a passenger airliner, or potentially a hypothetical launch platform for thermonuclear weapons. I wish I was joking. Doomsday weapons aside, it did have some sensible origins. As the 1960s gave way to the 1970s, new forecasts predicted dramatic increases in passenger and aerial cargo requirements by the end of the 20th century. Some predicted that air passenger traffic could hit 3 billion annually, which was more than triple the current numbers. Many believed that the future of air transport would be found in supersonic designs, such as the Concorde, which made its first flight in 1969. But others felt that sheer bulk rather than speed was the way forward, particularly when it came to cargo. In the early 1970s, NASA began preliminary design studies into what would become known as the span loader concept. In essence, they wanted to test the feasibility of an aircraft that spread its payload across the entirety of its wingspan, which allowed for the most efficient use of the aircraft's size and volume. This was not a new concept. As far back as the 1920s, aircraft with a blended wing design had been proposed, mostly as passenger transports. But these ideas were limited by the engine technology of the time, as well as a lack of understanding when it came to things such as advanced aerodynamics and the construction methods behind building large aircraft. By the 1970s, things had changed. The technology had mostly caught up to the requirements, and although knowledge in certain areas of aerodynamics was still somewhat lacking, NASA was confident enough in the capabilities of the American aircraft industry to go ahead with design plans for a particularly large and ambitious project. By 1975, the results from NASA's early studies had been encouraging enough for them to reach out to a trio of manufacturers who all had experience in building large transports – Boeing, Douglas, and Lockheed. NASA asked each of them to submit design proposals for the span loader concept, and each of them returned with some very dramatic ideas. Boeing already had experience in this field, as they had recently designed the equally ambitious and equally insane Resource Carrier 1, or RC-1 for short. Designed to haul oil and minerals out of the Arctic Circle, this behemoth was designed with a 500-foot wingspan, was to be powered by 12 Pratt & Whitney turbofans, and it was intended to carry a payload of 1 million kilograms. With that frighteningly massive design in mind, it's unsurprising that the Boeing submission was the one that NASA eventually selected. Known as the Model 759 project, Boeing, in cooperation with NASA, explored a number of different design concepts, with dozens of different configurations being considered but they all revolved around the design of a single, thick, supercritical wing profile. The design team grouped this large family of potential aircraft designs under two titles, conventional concepts and advanced concepts. That being said, and as evidenced by the designs shown, the former was far from conventional, but was admittedly less mad than the latter. The design concept used a highly modular approach, allowing a number of variations by simply adding more engines and increasing the wingspan. The designs used either a single or a twin-boomed fuselage, carrying a high-mounted tailplane, and the engines could be carried on pylons, either above or below the leading edge of the wing. As the project progressed, the early and more conservative straight-edge blended wing design gradually gave way to a more advanced flying wing design with a medium amount of sweep back. This was primarily done to increase the design's top speed. Earlier iterations were not predicted to break 0.5 mark, 
whereas to be considered economically viable, a speed of at least 0.7 Mach was considered mandatory. Not only was the project already yielding designs that were becoming rapidly more complex than intended, but mission creep was also starting to become a problem. Not only were there designs for a basic 759 transport, but now there were ones for transporting gas, oil, and other valuable materials. Additionally, Boeing's commercial team had also had their say, and a passenger version of the design had also been proposed. The 759 could theoretically carry 900 passengers over transcontinental air routes, and with a wingspan of 503 feet, it would completely eclipse the Boeing 747 jumbo jet in both size and capabilities. It was also around this time that the military became involved in this little project as well, and this is where some designs really did begin to trend towards the realms of fantasy. The Air Force was prepared to sacrifice some of the cargo capacity in exchange for range, but at the same time as this, they wanted the wing modified so that it was thick enough to accept armoured vehicles, trucks, and even main battle tanks. Eventually this expanded to include the capacity for carrying self-propelled artillery systems, and Boeing was forced to modify the 759 by extending the cockpit beyond the wing leading edge, so that two large cargo pods could be built into the centre section of the design. Unsurprisingly, this design change was predicted to have something of a detrimental effect on the aircraft's stability, but the Boeing team was confident that it was something they could eventually work out. The culmination of the military experimental versions of the Spanloader concept was the 759-213M, the M clearly standing for megalomania at this point. It was to be powered by eight turbofan engines, was to have a wingspan of almost 420 feet, and would have an all-up weight of almost 900 tonnes, of which 320 could be cargo. But the 213M was not designed to purely transport military cargo, as it turned out. A request had also been made to turn the 759 into an air-launched ballistic missile platform. Specifically, it was designed to carry four LGM-118 Peacekeeper missiles, each capable of carrying 11 300 kiloton nuclear warheads. The ballistic missiles would be ejected from the rear of the cargo bay, after which a parachute would deploy from the nose, causing it to orientate itself vertically, after which the rocket would ignite and the missile would head off to the stratosphere and beyond. Unsurprisingly, hauling 88-ton intercontinental ballistic missiles into the air presented several problems apparently, not least of which being what would happen if the aircraft was to, you know, crash. But as it turned out, the chief concern for Boeing engineers at the time wasn't the nuclear payload, it was in fact the landing gear. Even when it came to landing the aircraft empty, there were concerns about conventional gears failing and potentially causing extreme damage to the surface of any runway. To get around this, Boeing engineers proposed an air cushion system in place of the traditional undercarriage which meant that you could have been treated to the site in the 1990s when this was planned to enter service of an 880 ton nuclear capable flying wing taking off and landing with essentially glorified airbags attached to the front of its wing leading edge. As evidenced by the fact that nobody has ever been treated to such a site, and my goodness what a site it would be, the 759 project never really left the drawing board, though there was actually some serious support for it at the time. The project was cancelled due to a number of contributing factors, not the least being its growing complexity. By 1980, the cost of aviation fuel was far higher than it had been a decade ago, Economic slumps had somewhat curbed the apparently endless expansion of commercial aviation, and many companies were either shutting down, or they were being forced to shelve many of their more ambitious projects until things improved. The 759 was of course one such project. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and a big thank you of course to the Patreon supporters. 
It has been over a month since the last video went up, and I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone for your patience. Uh, moving into the new house and redecorating has been something of a mammoth task, but we are slowly getting there. A big thank you, of course, to our Wing Commander tier supporters, our highest tier members. And now that things are gradually beginning to settle again, I'm working on the deep dives and also specifically I'm working on the special video that you all voted on a while ago, so hopefully that will be coming out sooner rather than later. Stay tuned for that. But as always, thank you all for your continued support, and I will catch you all next time. Goodbye.